we're going to start talking about uh, finding and using equations that represent sequences. All right, first of all, just in general, a sequence is a list of numbers that follows a pattern. Each number is called a term of the sequence. So uh, we have several different types. Uh, obviously, this first one right here, um, we're adding five every time. That is actually, we're going to talk about it uh, later on today. That's an arithmetic sequence when you're adding the same number every time. Um, but I wanted to point out this one is what we call a finite sequence. It ends, okay? Finite means it has a beginning and an end. It has a designated number of terms. Notice the next two have the ellipse at the end, the dot, dot, dot. Those are infinite sequences. They have no end. They can keep going forever and ever and ever, um, whatever pattern they are following. Uh, if you'll notice this one, we are multiplying by 2 to get the next term. So that's an infinite sequence there. The last one is a little weird. Um, it's 1 over k when k is equal to 1, 2, 3, and it says it continues on and on. So the last one is kind of like they've given you the equation for the sequence. They haven't given you the terms of the sequence like they did with the first two. They gave you the equation. So this sequence would be 1 one half, one third, one fourth, it would just continue increasing that number in the denominator. So we're not adding the same thing every time, we're not multiplying by the same thing every time, uh, we're changing that number on the bottom every time. But there's a pattern to it, obviously. We're adding one to the denominator every single time. Okay, so sequences are all about patterns. Now, we can um, talk about what we call explicitly defined sequences. If it is explicitly defined, your terms are based on their position in the sequence. So is it the fifth term? Is it the tenth term? Is it the 100th term? You don't have to know any other term in the sequence if it's explicitly defined. So for example, let's find the first six terms in the 100th term of this sequence in which we are told a sub k is equal to k squared minus 1, where k is greater than or equal to 1. So this inequality right here is telling us where to start. We start with k equals 1. So everywhere we see k in our equation, we're going to plug in a 1. So a sub 1, the first term, is equal to 1 squared minus 1, which is 0. It wants us to find the first six, so we're going to keep going. The second term, a sub 2, is equal to 2 squared minus 1. That's 4 minus 1, that's 3. a sub 3 is equal to 3 squared minus 1. That's 9 minus 1, which is 8. a sub 4. 4 squared minus 1 is 16 minus 1, which is 15. A sub 5 is 5 squared minus 1, which is 24. A sub 6 is 6 squared minus 1, which is 35. Those are the first six terms. They also want the 100th term. So jumping a little bit, 100 squared minus 1. Well, 100 squared is 10,000. So minus 1 is 9,999. Um, just as a side note, you may see the sequence uh, written like this. Uh, they may write a sub k is equal to and put the fancy bracket and start listing the terms 0, 3, 8, 15, 24, 35, a little break, and then we've got another term, and then it keeps going. Okay, uh, I just wanted to show you that notation in case you see a list like that. It's designating these are the terms of the sequence: first term, second term, third term, so forth and so forth. Um, hmm? Well, I'm just listing it after we go. Um, or they may give you that list and say, figure out the formula. That kind of thing. I just want you to be familiar with that. Um, familiar with that notation. Okay? Now, 
Obviously, the explicit formula here is k squared minus 1. Does anybody else see another pattern that's occurring with these numbers? Okay. So every time we are adding the next odd number. Okay, we're adding the next odd number. So we added 3, we added 5, we added 7, we added 9, we added 11. That would be a recursive relationship, is how does this term depend on the previous term? That's what we're going to talk about is the recursive formula. How does each term re re uh, relate to the previous term? That's recursive. Explicit, you don't have to know anything about previous terms to figure out a particular term. You just got to know what term you're looking for. Okay. Um, so let's figure out the pattern and then list the next four terms. Okay, we've got 3, 8, 13, and 18. What does it look like we're doing here? We're adding 5. We're adding 5. So if we continue that pattern, then we've got 23, 28, 33, 38, and that's all I've asked for. And that's 4. Okay, how about the next one? It's actually the same thing that we were just talking about, isn't it? We added 3, then we add 5, then we add 7, so then we're going to add 9, 26, then we're going to add 11, 37, 13 is going to put us at 50, and 15 is going to put us at 65. All right, now. I think that their focus on the final exam are going to be on what we call arithmetic and geometric sequences. Not necessarily just general sequences, but I did want to throw those out there just in case. Uh, here's what I was talking about just a second ago about the recursively defined sequence. Um, your formula defines each term based on the previous term. So you do have to know the other terms in the sequence. So, um, let's look at this example. We need to find the first six terms and the tenth term. Notice I did not ask for the 100th term because we'd have to find all 99 before it um, based on this type of equation. So, you have to be told the first term or you have to be given a starting point. So, in this, in this case, we're given B sub 1 is equal to 3. The first term is 3. And then our recursively defined sequence says B sub n uh, that would be our current term, is equal to b sub n minus 1. Well, n minus 1, say n is 5, then n minus 1 is 4, so that is the previous term. n sub 1 is the previous term plus 2. So to find the current term, we take the previous one and we add 2 for all n greater than or equal to 2. We're going to start with 2 because we were given term number 1. All right, so b sub 2 is equal to, I'm replacing all the n's with 2. So 2 minus 1 is 1. b sub 1 is 3. So 3 plus 2 is 5. All right, I'm just trying to show you how this notation works here. So b sub 3 is equal to b sub 3 minus 1 plus 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. b sub 2, we just found it. It was 5. So that gives us 7. Okay. I think you're starting to see the pattern. Okay. Every single time we're just adding 2. So then b sub 4 is going to be 9. b sub 5 would be 11. b sub 6 would be 13. And so then the tenth term, um, let's see here, b sub 7 would be 15, 8 would be 17, 9 would be 19, so 10 is 21. Okay. Questions about the notation, because that's usually what kind of trips people up is the notation. The subscripts and things like that. Make sense? Okay. 
<clears throat> so let's look at what I think the, the curriculum focuses on. Uh, arithmetic sequence. Yes, it's arithmetic, not arithmetic. If you all English on here for a second, when it's a noun, you pronounce it one way. When it's an adjective, you just think it's an adjective and you pronounce it arithmetic instead of arithmetic. Anyways, an arithmetic sequence is a sequence where you are adding or subtracting the same number. We call that the common difference, and we use the variable D for that from each term to get the next term. So our general form here, we start with a sub 1, our first term. We add the common difference that gives us our next term. If we add it again, that gives us the third term. Okay, so if we added if we added D to this one, that would be a sub 1 plus D, that's where the 2D comes from. Okay, every time we're adding D to it again, that's why um, the general form looks like that. So your recursive, your current term is equal to the previous term plus the common difference. You may see the recursive definition also written in this in this form. Okay. So here, this would be current, previous. You may also see it like this. The next is equal to the current. That's the common difference. Okay, it's the exact same thing. It's just kind of a different perspective. Okay, in and n minus one or k plus one and k. Same difference, just a slightly different perspective. Okay, um, I've seen it both ways on sample questions, so that's why I'm showing it to you. Okay. Uh, most of the time, though, you're going to deal with the explicit definition or formula because it's the most helpful. Um, so this is your general form. This is on the formula sheet. Okay, they've got a sub n. They use n instead of k. Um, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, they just use n's instead of k's, but it's the same thing. So you'll plug in the first term. You'll either know it or you'll be able to figure it out. You'll plug in the common difference, the D, and then you're just going to simplify the equation a little bit in order to use it. So let's look at that. <clears throat> All right, so if we are given a sequence here, let's find the common difference, the tenth term, a recursive rule, and an explicit rule. So first of all, we need to figure out what we're adding every single time. What are we adding every single time? Four. So D is equal to four. Uh, let's go ahead and write the recursive. I know this is in the order in the instructions, but let's go ahead and do that part. So the recursive is, and I'm going to write it both ways, um, A sub N is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus 4, bless you. You need to list the first term because it's got to know where it starts. A sub 1 is equal to negative 6. And for, uh, you need to say n is greater than or equal to 2. Because you know the first one, so then you would start with the second one from that point. You could also write this a sub n plus plus 1 is equal to a sub n plus 4. a sub 1 is equal to negative 6. 4. On this one, you start with 1. Excuse me, because when you plug in 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. That's going to get you started on the second Okay, So just some technicalities there. Let's find the explicit. So the explicit formula is a sub n is equal to our first term, negative 6, plus n minus 1 times the common difference. Now here's what I'm talking about with the simplifying. You've got to distribute that 4 and simplify the equation. So that gives us 4n, and we've got negative 6 plus negative 4, so that's minus 10. So 4n minus 10 is our explicit rule. You can always check that, all right? Plug in 1. 